This is the upside down world we're currently living in, where net zero and green initiatives take priority over everything else, including public safety. Trying to electrify emergency vehicles is not only bloody stupid, it's also incredibly dangerous. Diesel powered fire trucks and ambulances are reliable, have long range and can be refueled in a matter of minutes, meaning their downtime is minimised. Whereas an EV equivalent has far less range and requires hours to charge when its battery runs out, meaning that during that time it is unable to respond to emergencies. But this obvious fact does not seem to stop delusional governments from retiring the reliable diesel fleet in favour of electric replacements. This sends a very clear message that we should all carefully note, namely that environmental virtue signalling takes priority over the safety of the public. Welcome to the UK's new electric ambulances. Welcome back to MGuy, British engineer and lawyer turned Sydney YouTuber. Please be sure to like, share and subscribe, hit the notification bell, drop a comment down below and don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter X. The stunning reality of this story is that not only are the ambulances less good at what they need to do, but they're also vastly more expensive, as we shall see in this video later. And if you are in any doubt that in modern Britain, green initiatives were more important than patient care, just wait till you hear this article from The Telegraph about the collapsing National Health Service, NHS. Fears for patients in NHS net zero drive. Paramedics concerned that vehicles introduced to hit green targets will take too long to recharge. The NHS is to introduce electric ambulances, raising concerns that its drive for net zero is being put above patient safety. Paramedics fear patients will be forced to wait longer because of the hours lost recharging the vehicles, with particular concern about coverage of rural areas given the limited range. The move next month is part of a series of measures that whistleblowers fear put green credentials above medical priorities. The drive had created a bureaucracy that was diverting vast sums from the front line and placing grossly unethical obstacles in the way of clinical decisions, one whistleblower warned. NHS England has set up a greener NHS team with a combined salary bill of £3 million a year, leaked documents reveal. That would pay for a hell of a lot of nurses, by the way. Officials created 48 roles, including five on six-figure salaries, as part of efforts to pursue an environmental agenda, which means every medicine and product has to undergo an evergreen assessment. The 135-question process means that no decision can be taken without a product's social values and contribution to emissions targets being considered. One supplier alleged that devices such as plastic cannulas were routinely being rejected on environmental grounds despite the fact they would improve patient safety. An extra layer of bureaucracy will be added next month, with every NHS supplier asked to draw up a carbon reduction plan. Other eco-initiatives being rolled out include climate-friendly pain relief for mothers in labour and chemotherapy deliveries and GP visits via e-bikes. My God. A whistleblower told The Telegraph every part of the NHS is under-resourced and waiting lists remain historically high, but commitment to green zealotry remains unchanged. My God, this is just astonishing. Forget the needs of the patient. If the treatment isn't green enough, then you're not getting it. And not only does this put lives at risk, but it also costs more because the electric ambulances need massive infrastructure upgrades to function even at their vastly reduced level. Net zero ambulances could cost NHS half a billion pounds. Health Service estimates costs at £100 million to upgrade infrastructure at hubs and hospitals to ensure adequate charging stations. Net zero ambulance plans could cost taxpayers more than half a billion pounds, analysis by The Telegraph has suggested. The NHS is committed to making all new emergency ambulances electric by 2030 and the entire fleet net zero by 2045. Estimates suggest it would cost £70 million to make the 480 ambulances in the West Midlands electric at around £150,000 per vehicle over the next five years. Extrapolated across the 4,300 ambulances currently in operation across the NHS in England, this suggests the move would cost the health service £627 million by the end of the decade. The budget of ambulance services in England stands at £2.5 billion to £3 billion per year, 
although only a fraction of this is spent on vehicles. Board papers from the West Midlands Ambulance Service Trust, published in 2023, said there were major barriers to converting its fleet to electric. The main reason for the expense is that no leading manufacturers create electric ambulances because of the limited demand. Hmm, I wonder why. Instead, focusing their efforts on popular vans, which the NHS has had to look at converting into ambulances. The electric vans on the market typically cover 70 to 80 miles, with a top speed of 56 miles per hour, and would drain the energy required for life-saving medical equipment, officials said. Ambulances are usually replaced every five years, but the new electric models would have to be on the road for in excess of 15 years to reach a commercially viable position, which makes this an impossible position, the report said. Prices could come down with time, but the NHS has also estimated that it would cost £100 million to upgrade infrastructure at ambulance hubs and hospitals around the country to ensure adequate charging stations. As always, the answer to all of this is, but we're saving the planet. No, you're not. The difference a few electric ambulances will make to the climate, when China is burning coal like there's no tomorrow, is precisely the square root of bugger all. The immorality of this is just breathtaking. This madness is not saving the planet, and now you're not saving patients either.